Southern California is long overdue for the big one, but scientists say we're locked, loaded, and ready to roll. ...is one of the most famous fault systems in the world. It has been the site of many major earthquakes that have changed the landscape of California and helped people learn how to be ready for them. The San Andreas Fault is one of the most renowned fault systems globally. It's been the epicenter of numerous major earthquakes that have not only reshaped California's landscape, but also taught us valuable lessons about earthquake preparedness. The Southern San Andreas Fault hasn't had a significant earthquake in quite a while. Is it because of changes in tectonic activity? Or is it because of the stress accumulation? Or even mysterious geological factors that we're still uncovering? Well, keep watching this video and you will get the explanation you're in search of. Previous Earthquakes The 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which happened on April 18th and was thought to be 7.9 on the Richter scale, is the most well-known of these. Remember the 1906 San Francisco earthquake? It struck on April 18th, registering a massive 7.9 on the Richter scale. This quake wreaked havoc demolishing properties across San Francisco and surrounding areas, claiming around 3,000 lives and rendering over 200,000 people homeless. Stretching along 430 kilometers, 267 miles of the fault, this earthquake is one of the most significant in U.S. history. Another major quake was the 1857 Fort Tejon earthquake on January 9th, with a similar magnitude of 7.9. This one fractured about 350 kilometers, 220 miles, of the fault from Parkfield to Wrightwood, causing significant ground displacement, although it affected a sparsely populated area. Moving forward to October 17, 1989, when the Loma Prieta earthquake, a 6.9 magnitude tremor, struck the Santa Cruz Mountains south of San Francisco. This quake famously caused part of the Bay Bridge to collapse and inflicted substantial damage in San Francisco's Marina District, highlighting the region's vulnerability to tectonic activities. The Anatomy of the Fault Areas. It killed about 3,000 people and made over 200,000 people homeless. Let's dive into the fascinating world of geology, focusing on the dynamic San Andreas Fault. Picture it as a giant shifting crack in the Earth's crust, constantly evolving and changing. This fault is a type called a right lateral strike slip fault, which is just a fancy way of saying that the Pacific plate on one side of the fault moves northwest relative to the North American plate on the other side. Now, uh, imagine the fault as a bundle of strands. In some areas, there's a clear main fault line, almost like a prominent scar. But in other places, it's more like a tangled web of smaller cracks. These strands are always on the move, though you wouldn't notice it on a day-to-day -day basis. On average, the San Andreas Fault slips about 20 to 35 millimeters per year, which is roughly the width of a small paperclip, 0.8 to 1.4 inches. This slipping happens rapidly during earthquakes, those sudden, jolting moments, and then the fault goes back to being relatively quiet for long stretches. Earth's crust, the infamous San Andreas Fault, is sending out unmistakable signals, whispers of an impending seismic upheaval that could shatter the foundations of the region. What's driving all this movement, you ask? It's the Pacific Plate's northwestward push, moving at a pace of about 50 millimeters per year, which is about two inches. This relentless push is fueled by powerful tectonic activities like the spreading of the seafloor at mid-ocean ridges and the subduction of oceanic plates. These processes are like the engine of the earth, constantly stirring things up and causing the plates to shift and slide. If you're liking this video so far, 
don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Living on the Edge Andreas Fault has a big effect on California's landscape and communities. Geologically, it has made things that are very interesting. It is common knowledge that millions of Californians live near the fault, making them highly susceptible to severe ground shaking, surface ruptures, and secondary effects like landslides and liquefaction during major quakes. Cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco, densely populated and vital to the economy, face significant risks, necessitating robust preparedness and mitigation measures. The Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989 did a lot of damage to transport systems, showing how important it is to have strong infrastructure. The 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake underscored the importance of resilient infrastructure as it heavily damaged transport systems. Consequently, California enforces some of the strictest building codes to enhance resilience. The Icy World of Europa Europa is one of Jupiter's biggest moons. It has an interesting and changing environment that scientists are interested in because it might have geological activity and maybe even life. Shifting our focus from Earth to the stars, let's talk about Europa, one of Jupiter's largest moons. The moon's icy shell, crisscrossed with cracks and ridges, hints at significant geological processes. Notably, Europa features a major strike-slip fault called Astypalaea Linea, stretching 810 kilometers, 500 miles, across the moon's south polar region, about the same length as California's segment of the San Andreas Fault. Astypalaea Linea shows clear signs of horizontal movement, similar to the San Andreas Fault, where crustal blocks slide past each other laterally. NASA's Galileo spacecraft captured high-resolution images revealing the fault as a long, thin crack with offset ridges resembling a staircase. These displacements suggest that warmer, softer ice from below, or possibly liquid water from the subsurface ocean, rises to fill the gaps, creating new ice. Geological Parallels The Astapalia Linea and the San Andreas Fault are similar in more ways than just how long they are. Let's take a closer look at the fascinating similarities and differences between Astypalaea Linea on Europa and the San Andreas Fault here on Earth. Both are striking examples of geological features that showcase significant horizontal movement, but they have their unique characteristics and drivers. To start with, both Astypalaea Linea and the San Andreas Fault are what we call strike-slip faults which means they slide past each other horizontally rather than moving up or down. When it comes to movement, Astypalaea Linea has shifted about 50 kilometers, or roughly 30 miles, which is quite a bit like the substantial shifts you see along the San Andreas Fault during major earthquakes. Crossing Europa are vast cracks and discolored streaks that combine to create a complex yet beautiful world. Now, here's where things start to differ. The forces behind these movements are pretty distinct. On Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, the movement of Astapalaea Linea is largely driven by the immense gravitational pull of Jupiter. This gravity causes Europa's icy shell to experience regular cycles of stretching and squishing. Imagine it like the way a sponge might get compressed and expanded with each squeeze. This constant tugging by Jupiter's gravity pushes the fault in one direction and keeps it from moving back, leading to an accumulation of motion over time. motion builds along the massive fault line, the entire region is on edge. On Earth, it's a bit different. The San Andreas Fault's movement is driven by tectonic forces within the Earth's mantle. Here, the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate are constantly pushing against each other. This interaction creates a lot of stress, and when that stress gets too great, it releases in the form of earthquakes, making the fault slip and shift. So, while Astypalaea Linea and the San Andreas Fault both show impressive horizontal movement, the forces at play behind their movements are quite different, reflecting the unique conditions 
of their respective worlds. Capturing the Faults Scientists use advanced imagery and data to explore faults both on Earth and on Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. On Earth, they rely on a combination of satellite images, aerial photos, and ground-based observations to study faults like the San Andreas Fault. These tools give them a detailed view of the fault's characteristics. For example, satellite images show the San Andreas Fault as a distinct straight line that cuts across a variety of landscapes, from dry deserts to green valleys. This clear, visible separation helps scientists understand the fault's impact on the surrounding environment. Got on the first orbit, G1, and now we zoom in, we're able to come back and look at this same area of the planet in much higher resolution. Similarly, NASA's Galileo spacecraft has provided valuable images of Europa's surface. Using these images, scientists have been able to see the Astypalaea linea, a prominent fault line on Europa. The Galileo spacecraft captured detailed mosaics of Europa, revealing this strikingly straight fault amidst the moon's icy surface. Just like the San Andreas Fault on Earth, Astypalaea linea stands out clearly in the imagery, offering insights into the geological activity on Europa. Comparing Tectonic Activity Europa's tectonic processes bear resemblance to those on Earth, albeit driven by different forces. Earth's tectonic activity results from internal heat, causing mantle convection and plate movements, while Europa's activity stems from Jupiter's gravitational tides affecting the subsurface ocean and ice shell. These differences highlight the diversity of geological processes across the solar system. Earthly Analogues and Future Missions To better understand the geological processes on Europa, Scientists look at Earth's features like Death Valley and the Salton Sea as useful analogs. The Salton Sea, located in a tectonic trough formed by the San Andreas Fault and its related faults, is a great example of what's called extensional tectonics. This is when the Earth's crust is being pulled apart, creating rift valleys and basins. The Salton Sea sits in a region where the land is stretching and sinking which helps scientists see how similar processes might work on Europa. Extreme, then it's Death Valley. It's not only the driest place in America, it's also the hottest in the world. Death Valley is another key example. It's a large sunken basin that formed because of tectonic stretching, where the Earth's crust is being stretched and pulled apart. This stretching causes the land to sink and create depressions. The way Death Valley's landscape has been shaped by these forces gives scientists a parallel to what's happening on Europa. By examining these Earth-based features, scientists gain valuable insights into the geological processes on Europa. If you agree with this, let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments. And remember, to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.